What's up guys, welcome to the Cross Trainer Series, where we aim to bridge the gap between real firearms training and airsoft for both civilian and military training. In this video, we're joined by our two guest instructors, Ryan and Mojo, who are both currently active duty law enforcement. Ryan, happy to be here. Been a cop about 15 years and uh, look forward to uh, the video. Uh, Mojo, been a cop now for about four years, uh, prior military, and I'm also very happy to be here. In this episode of the Cross Trainer Series, we're gonna be talking about rifle presentation. And by presentation, we mean pointing the gun. Mojo and Ryan are gonna go over uh, some really useful ways to do that, the varieties of ways to do that. And with that, I'm gonna pass it to them. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a few things to take into consideration uh, before just jumping right into pointing the gun. Um, you, you know, we, these guns are adjustable. You have your length of pull options. There's been a lot of debates and discussions we've had and learning and growing points. Um, I used to start off with, uh, with a gun like this. Because short is cool and uh, sometimes cool is not efficient. So again, deciding uh, where <laughs> your length of pull uh, is properly set um, is one of the things you're going to need to do to maximize uh, your efficiency when pointing the gun. Um, obviously, we have the different positions. There's, you know, low ready, high ready, all that good stuff, which we'll get into. But I think starting out with a gun that is set up for the environment you're going to be working in, for your body type, are all very important considerations. Um, obviously, you know, there's, there's various uh, attachments you can put on the front of these. Some guys just like to grab the rail. Uh, having something to, you know, to butt your hand up against to, to help suck that gun into your, uh, to your shoulder is also important too. So all good considerations uh, to, to take into account before just picking up a gun and pointing it at a target. We also move into posture as well. So now length of pull is really gonna set the distance of the controls and really the rest of the firearm away from your body. Yes. So when, when he's talking about length of pull, it's the distance of, of the rest of the platform away from you. Exactly. So figuring out what position for you is most ideal um, is oftentimes gonna be dictated by the amount of gear that you're wearing because right. that will change if you're Absolutely. wearing a vest or if you're wearing just a, a, a combat top or a t-shirt. Um, and then also, you know, what's most comfortable for you. And that's the advantage to adjustable stocks uh, that non-adjustable platforms don't have. They don't have that luxury, so. Hey, actually, you want me covering something real quick. So length really? of pull really covers the idea of control of the gun. Right. The, the amount of leverage you have when you're pulling the gun into your shoulder to pull the trigger. Um, obviously, real guns versus airsoft guns. The gun's going to wrinkle the same if I shoot like this or if I shoot like this, it doesn't matter, right? But a quick little demo, showed my buddy, uh, Nick Young, good buddy of mine, uh, back, back in 2017, took a class from him. Uh, so I want you to go ahead, hold your arm like such, simulating that the stock is completely collapsed. Mm -hmm. Right, you have this collapsed stock. I want you to resist me on this one, okay? It's kind of hard, right? Yeah. Extend it, give yourself some leverage. Oh, interesting. A little bit easier, right? Yeah, to fight me on that one, strength is there. Yeah. You have more angles to pull towards so you. So rather than keeping it real mm -hmm. compressed. Yep. Just or like, uh, you know, when you're talking about kind of that distance when you're, the, the, the distance and strength that comes with not locking your elbows with a handgun. Same translation. Come back, coming back in here, you and locking the wrist, points. you're creating that, that anchor point. Yep. You're doing the same thing with the rifle stock. Yep. That setting that distance gives you a lot more control, a lot more stability. Leverage. We Got try it. to use the word leverage for that one. Okay. So, but exactly, you were exactly right. And did you feel, like, all I care about is did yeah. you feel Aside from my lack of balance. <laughs> did yeah. you feel the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You absolutely yeah. felt yeah. it. It was so, much easier to keep my arm from like being here. moved or bending when out here, here versus than here. in here. You had no anchor point. Right. You had no leverage. And that's, that's one of the things we cover. Um, the starting position, like high. I know a lot of people talk about at the ready, high ready, low ready. You want to cover that? Yeah. Again, that, that's uh, you know, once you've worked out the uh, the setting up the rifle to fit your body style and the environment that you're giving there, I'm bring up environment because again, you might be working in some very confined spaces in a small house or structure, stuff like that. Uh, maybe you're working in a car. You know, maybe that's uh, that's an entire possibility. Um, but moving on with that, if you can set the gun up first to meet your needs, uh, that's going to help you perform those positions uh, at a greater level of efficiency. And again, um, environment dictating. Uh, if Mojo and I are working together, the, uh, low, rate, the low ready may not be uh, an option for me or the you know, stowed position. I might have to work in some sort of a, a high port or a high ready if I'm coming off of him. Uh, height dictating, we switch positions, it's the same for him. If I'm a bit taller, these are not uh, height jokes. These are, these are they're pure tactics. Um, you know, he might be limited in what he can use standing behind me or with even someone who is actually taller. Um, you can get into performance as well. Uh, Mojo could talk a little bit about performance. We had this debate on the range one time about, you know, hey, I'm faster actually getting on target from the low ready and bringing the gun uh, up into the fight than I would be from the high ready. It's just because I've likely trained that more. And, you know, again, we talked about training ceilings. We all set our own training ceiling. I actually thought for a while that the high ready couldn't be faster than someone who was at the low ready and 
we debunk that myth. So uh, again, it's, it's what you choose and what you train. Yep. Now speed aside, there's also a safety element to uh, the position of the barrel, right? Correct. Absolutely. So going with a, a low ready, if you're in a confined space, hallways, rooms and stuff, and you're in a stack, pointing the barrel down can put your friendlies Yes. Lower extremities in danger, Absolutely. as opposed to a high ready, there's generally mm -hmm. not somebody way above you. So the high ready gives you a lot more, a lot more safety in terms of you know that that muzzle direction, right? Yeah. So that I think is also a consideration. Sure, is, is situation dependent. You know, where am I going to be the safest? And this you know applies for airsoft as well as, as real good. firearms because yeah. you know in airsoft games oftentimes we get into rooms where you're behind two or three other people and knowing where your muzzle's pointing knowing where the safest place to put that when you're not firing i think is paramount absolutely so touching back into that i personally i always find myself doing a lot of high ready i feel comfortable with it I, the gun's anchored and i have a support hand to do what it needs to do so as you start to do this like i'd say i'm with ryan i can go to a high ready and i make it safe so if ryan faces that real quick i can make this safe absolutely so again the biggest consideration is muzzle past meat so my muzzle past his head and there's no way for me to do anything. Now, if I start to dip it, that's a problem. That's a training deficiency on my own. I need to, un I need to unscrew myself in that aspect. I, with this right here, I have the ability to touch him. I can move him. Let's say I see something he doesn't. I could push him out of the way, get my gun into the fight. I can start working that aspect behind it. And the idea behind it is the gun's anchored. I have my support hand to move. Right. I can do what I need to do, like for active shooter or for any kind of SWAT stuff. Like I could grab my partners or move people out of the way. And then obviously I have a pretty open line of sight from right here. I could still see what I need to see. The problem with the low ready that I found, and although it is like, technically it is quicker right. to present the gun from a low ready, from right here, well, let's say for starting positions, I need my support hand to anchor the gun down. Right. Suck it back it in. It makes all of the things you just touched on more difficult. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. without a doubt. So having here, I have to anchor this gun down because doing this is awkward. Now I'm holding the gun as it's weight's entirety. Right. So I'm, I'm holding the gun now and it's awkward on my wrist, whatever, versus here, very comfortable. It's not, I could sit here all day. Yeah. And you can rely on you know, this, your weapon slung currently. So you're yep. relying also on the sling to give you added stability. And there's Absolutely. an entire argument for why we run slings. Yeah. Right? So without getting too much into that, yeah. so you are more stable in that position. Yep, the sling is here, it's tucked under my armpit. I'm sitting here and I'm just relaxing. Right. If I let go of the gun, I can sit there. It, it, honestly, that's the majority of it's the weight's being taken up by that. Right. I could remove my primary hand. Obviously we don't remove our hands from fire, fire control if we don't have to, but I could sit there and, and chill at this all day. Not a big deal at all. Again, movement, my support hand being accessible to do whatever. Now, as we start talking about the presentation of the weapon from these positions, if we're going into an environment where it's like, all of a sudden I might see people, I'll index my support hand on the top of the gun. I'll start doing my thing. Look at my eyes. Our eyes are laser beams fixated on what I want to aim at or what I want to essentially attempt to engage. I'll drive the gun forward, removing it out of the pocket of my shoulder and driving it back in. And the, old, the whole biggest thing is try not to move anything that doesn't get it moved. So try not to eliminate any kind of excessive waste movement from a high ready. So from sitting right here, cheek the gun, I can start firing from right there. And if you want to cut the low ready, because you're actually really fast in the low ready. Yeah, so again, we talked about that. Um, I prefer the low ready. Again, it doesn't make it any better or worse. Absolutely. Um, I, I choose to carry it that way um, for mostly static training. Um, I have to preface that any movement style of training or uh, if we're in live environments, then I generally go with high ready and that's because the, it provides me more mobility. Uh, we didn't really, and that's, that's a key thing to talk about too with these positions. Uh, they're vastly different if you're static or moving. If, if I'm going to be moving, you will, I can almost say you'll never find me at the low ready simply because you can pump the arms with the high ready. Uh, if you fall, you're gonna fall into a more natural fighting position and you won't have a buttstock, potentially taking out your teeth or nose if you fall and you're in the low ready. So That's interesting, yeah. yeah. Additional considerations to have. Um, again, if you run, naturally your arms are gonna move this way. Mm -hmm. If you are doing this. You're getting that, yep. You're, you're fighting the tool. So things to consider uh, when you move from, you know, hey, is this relevant in a static conversation versus uh, actually moving and mostly we're moving, so. Uh, again, for me, same way, you're not bringing your eyes to the optic, you're bringing the optic to your eyes. So as Mojo uh, spoke about earlier, we're trying to move as little as possible uh, in those moments that we're bringing that gun into fight, and it's just a straight up. And I'm gonna get the dot every time where I need to, and it's hinging on the same points uh, with my gear. Um, I find that I don't get the full buttstock flat and flush against uh, uh, my body. It's usually on the... Yeah, because the, the kit's yeah. different. You have to find the spots on your kit that work. And again, it's an imperfect uh, imperfect environment that we're working in. You know, it's not... Uh, 
it's not nap time. We're out there, we have all this gear on, we're getting shot at, we're shooting back, so you have to make do with the gear that you have, the position that you have, you have to train, set those ceilings. But again, it's just uh, finding that spot that's the same to provide you that consistency, and you're getting those same hinge points so you can bring that gun up and into the fight. Okay, so that's low ready, high ready. Are there any other um, at rest positions that you might need to present from that you think would be uh, interesting and or useful? Uh, there could there could be a lot of myriad of different ways that we didn't cover, um, but those are the primary two because in, in any kind of a live environment, whether we're actually pointing real guns or we're doing uh, airsoft guns, I find myself, I'm in the mentality that like stuff might go down and I try to avoid any other position if possible. So when it comes time to walking like a patrol ready, right? So we're sitting here like we're just patrolling. If I'm sitting here like this, my, it's just practically a low ready. Yep. Uh, in essence, it's just a low ready. I'm sitting here walking, chilling out, hanging out, doing my thing. All of a sudden something happens, weapon goes on fire, shoot the gun, do my thing. High ready would be, I've never really hung out in a high ready. Like I don't really hang out right here. Like if, I mean, if we're being lazy and I'm like hanging out with the boys, right. like sure, might do this, it looks cool. Good for a candid photo, right? We could look at that aspect behind it. So, but. Photography. <laughs> photography. But in essence, usually this is like a, there's an intent behind this position. Right. So it's like, hey, we're stacking up the exterior portion of a structure. We're about to make entry in the structure. Um, it's further back in the stack. And it's like, okay, because I don't find myself playing airsoft like this. I'm like, all of a sudden I see somebody, bam. Right. Usually it's it's right here. It's like, okay, we're searching, we're searching, we're hunting, whatever. Because now, guess what? I have two hands on the gun. Right. Versus like one hand on the gun. And again. I mean, you yeah. can sit here like this, but now my, my support hand's blocking a lot. And I usually don't do that because again, I want this hand for control. So it's it's a it's a it's a situation dictates environment dictates for a lot of that stuff. But again, it's dependent. Like we could talk about like at the ready, like if we're searching potentially, right? We're searching, like we're in a house. There might be somebody there that some that needs some servicing. So we're like, all right, cool. We're searching, we're searching, and, and again, it's just a low ready. You may want to touch on those those heights at which we hold a low ready or a high ready and, right. and how they diminish right. so something, the ability. Okay. Something that you guys both do kind of by default is there. there's a known distance that you're lowering the rifle for a low ready. Yeah. yeah. So what what is that distance? How far is too far to be dropping a, you know, a weapons platform that it becomes inefficient to get back up? Like what is that tolerance and what you should what should you train for? I guess for the most part, situation definitely does dictate in that aspect. Distance. So, Distance, time, shielding, whatever, a lot of factors that come into play here. Um, if it's imminent, like I hear like noises probably in the house that I'm about to go into, I will definitely be more at or ready, just low enough so I could see like maybe to someone's feet. So all I have to do is pop the gun up and pull the trigger, right? But if it's more of a casual searching, I'll drop it a little bit lower so I could see more, so I'm not sucked into the gun as much. It's dependent. I mean, you actually touched on that pretty well, so. Yeah, because it's the, it's the difference between knowing that someone is quick drawing a Cheeto on you or a weapon, you know? And if you're right. pointing the gun right at them and all you see is general movement, you know, how are you gonna perceive that uh, or see uh, and know what to perceive. You have to see the hands. So I could say, you know, he pointed at the knees, but for someone who's taller, that's the wrong spot. I say point it in a direction that allows you to see what the hands are doing when that motion um, kicks off. And then you can make your movements from there. And again, we should be training to a level that provides us that ability to get that gun up fast enough. And if we're not quite there yet, continue to train. The position in either ready situation. Gives you an idea. So the, the reason why I went into that one. So it's like, if that gun's lower, I see somebody in a different color uniform. From here, the gun moving up, I have the determination to not shoot. Versus if I'm already pointing, looking at somebody saying sucked into my optic, illuminating my peripheral vision, if I see anything move, ha, it's gonna get shot. Right. And the key difference is here, you're not saying, if I'm not currently engaging someone, I'm dropping my weapon completely. No, you're right. not. Right, so you're not, you're not out of the fight. Mm -hmm. right? You're just dropping low enough so that you've got a greater view of what's going mm -hmm. on. With like with the dynamics of AMS, you're always in the fight. Yeah. Like literally, there are teams that are flanking you, teams that are moving. Next thing you know, you push past the building five times after respawn. Next thing you know, there's people occupying it. It's like, oh man, you're always in a fight, so you always gotta be ready for sure. Even in real life too, like the getting coffee in the morning, gotta be ready. Always gotta be ready. Yeah. When we talk about rifle presentation, there are some key points of contact that are kind of the reason why rifles, including their longer barrels, are more accurate than handguns. You guys want to talk about what, what you're looking for when you're presenting a rifle, those points of contact and why they aid in stability? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, you want to go first? Fire, fire away with like um, your, your basic fundamentals, the, the four. The four fundamentals, okay, cool. So, Matt, actually I want, you to answer, I want you to answer this question. What do you think they are? 
Uh, well, I mean, obviously, you've got your your primary okay. trigger finger, right? That's so, one. So that's the, your 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 I guess your main point of support for the platform, okay, right? That's so it's doing most of the heavy lifting and stability. Sure. Um, and then I would imagine, you know, you've got the front of your hand, sure. or, or your your off hand, which is kind of allowing you to drive and support the front end, Precisely. right? Precisely. Okay. So because you, you want that to lead you into your target, I would imagine. Money. Uh, and then your shoulder. Okay. Are we missing I mean, one, or is that, is that good? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess that would be like my what I would assume first. Cheek. Oh, and your cheek. Well, of course. Yeah, cheek. of course. That's a level of stability. So, so does that count as... It's, does a, that it's count a point of contact. Okay. It's a point of contact on the gun. Um, just like we look at a pistol. If we grip the pistol with two fingers, pull the trigger. But if I add another finger, it may not be doing a lot, but it's adding more points of contact and more friction along with the weapon system to help control the gun if need be. Okay. So... Um, so the good thing is you understand it, which is good. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that we always try to, to put out to people. It's like, hey, you've been doing it already. It's just sometimes hard to articulate, sure. but you understand it, right? So when we look at the rifle as a whole, um, we talk about the C-clamp grip, we could talk about gripping it like a monkey grips a hammer, whatever the case may be. Uh, back in the day, I would say Magpul Industries kind of, or Magpul Dynamics with Travis Haley, Chris Costa, they were kind of the ones to, to for, foreground this, principles of shooting. The idea behind it was when you grip the pistol, when we grip the pistol grip here, there's still ways to move the gun. When we wrap our thumb over the top of it, now there's, it's harder to do so because we we're increasing that points of friction, that points of contact. Literally, who thought that doing this would change it, the game? Right? Mm -hmm. So, and for instance to that, people do the pointing of the finger. So we can do point shooting. I can point my finger essentially what I want to shoot. So we have that idea. And we, if you don't have a vertical grip, you can just, just grip the full top, grip, right. top of the rail. Yes, top of the rail, go over the top of the gun, not a big deal. So as we do that, we don't want necessarily our arm locked out all the way, but we also use that same principle of locking the wrist and bending of the elbow, okay. same thing. And now also we just length the pull. We're going to find the buttstock will sit in the crook of our shoulder. And if you're wearing kit, which most people that run guns usually wear a kit, what I like to do is I put the buttstock in between this portion of the outside of the plate carrier and I trap it with this muscle right oh, here. Oh, in between the strap and yeah. the shoulder. I, okay. just, I, give it, I give it away, you smash it. I give it away. I don't, yeah. don't give it away, I'm sorry. So I do that. And once that happens, so again, grip from the top here, I rotate and I rotate my, my uh, this, what is that? Shoulder Bicep? forward? Yeah, I rotate the shoulder forward, yeah. trap it. After that, I'm shooting. Okay. Super so, simple. So I find myself dealing with this a lot with the plate carriers that I run because of the, the padding that are on them. I'm constantly, like the, the stock feels like it's sliding around, moving around. I'm trying to find that perfect position. Anchoring. So moving off of the pad, instead of trying to rest it where you would without a vest on, simply moving the stock out away from the strap gives you more stability. It does. Okay. The, the, the pad is the inconsistency. Right. So we can drive it to where that's just a stopping force. I put the stock here and I put my shoulder right there and I pinch it between the two and I just wrap it. Okay. That's, that's personally how I do it. I yeah, answers. same thing. I used to do that. I used to try to find a spot on my gear that I could replicate every time and I wasn't able to. So I eventually moved it off and put it back on a body part that is always going to be in the same spot, uh, which ultimately provided me more uh, consistency. Now you also touched on um, bringing the sights up to you. Correct. Uh, and part of that process is having the stock positioned in a way that you can roll it up into place. Mm -hmm. So that's finding that spot and rolling it up uh, so that you're not dropping your head. When it comes to getting that fourth point of contact that you mentioned, you know, resting your cheek on the stock, is there a consideration there for making sure that the stock is pocketed high enough in the shoulder that when you're rolling it up, it's coming to meet your cheek so that you're not dropping down into it? Or is that a consideration that you think on actively or, does, or do you just find that natural point of aim as part of raising the sights to you. I think that eye. comes with your reps and your natural point of aim. No, diff no different than the, you know, the, the thousands of reps you do with our handgun to bring it up and have that dot land where we need to, right in front of our eyes. It's the same with rifles. You know, I know the, the points on my body where this gun needs to land, so I'm not coming up and low and having to bring my shoulders up. Just us here talking, I know, for me to get this gun in a position where I can fire it, I need to have the bottom portion of the buttstock landing in that shoulder pocket so that when I bring it up, I'm getting my dot. Uh, and then again, for me, switching things up a little bit um, and just diving a little bit more into detail about how all this works, I actually provide most of my work from the front yep. and not the back. If anything, my strong hand is merely along for the ride because Interesting. Okay. Um, I like to kind of look at it this way. Like this gun should be able to operate with him pulling the trigger now and I'm getting effective shots on target and doing all the things I need to do. 
because I'm controlling the vast majority of this weapon system with my support hand and actually not doing overworking it with my strong hand. So don't over grip your, your strong hand. Let it just ride along. If I'm going to 80, 20 it, it's going to be 80, 20. If you, if you said, Hey, you get 80, 20, put it to work. For me, it's 80, 20. If that's the best way to kind of describe that. Um, if you're telling me it's 60, 40, 60, 40. Okay. I like to keep the percentage of work I'm doing more towards the front and get all of that mitigation of, uh, recoil impulse and movement from up here so that my finger can move uh, freely to work the trigger faster or slower uh, and get more precise shots, find that wall if I'm using a two-stage trigger and all that good stuff. Precisely, he hit it right. So if you tense up stuff, you can't move that as fast. Okay. So I always loosen up the right hand or my primary hand that will be pulling the trigger. That's a huge one. People forget about that sometimes, um, but I will say this. So on a real gun, we have a buffer tube and there's a spring with a buffer inside of it. That mass is centrally located right here. Control on that. an AR-15. On an AR-15, on a real one. With airsoft gun, that's what, the wires? Yeah, on an AEG, that's generally yeah. your wires. There are some guns like the Bolt series that have a recoil, yeah. the KWAs that have the recoil yep. shock system. Like the gas, yeah. like GBB guns, whatever. And so, GBBs, yeah. so for me, what I like to do, um, this is now introducing to the high-mounted optics. Mm -hmm. So um, this is like an absolute, let's say absolute code. Yeah, it's a lower one-third absolute co-witness. So what we're talking about is your iron sights essentially would be in the lower one-third of the optic window, or they're gonna be directly in line. So when I pop up in my sights, I see these, uh, right now, the iron sights in the line to the optic, they're on the kind of like the bottom one-third of the window. So this is the lower one-third mount. Um, a lot of us have been starting to run high-mounted optics. Like our real guns have high-mounted optics. If you're running, let's say, if you're playing airsoft and you have a full paintball mask on, you have one of those uh, face shields on, it's hard to cheat this gun with all that stuff in the way. You won't be able to get down there. So a lot of guys started buying risers and putting the optics higher so that in, this, in an essence, I will do a chin weld instead of a cheek weld. I could cheek the gun from right here and I could still get my sights on. Obviously the difference between hide over bore in terms of relation to your optic to your barrel line is gonna be a little bit offset, a little sure. bit higher. Sure. But regardless of the fact, it creates a, sta a stable shooting platform to the point where I no longer have to do this. I can literally just bring the gun up to my face. So um, again, controlling the mass of the gun, covering as much of the buttstock, friction is your friend on this one, uh, more contact surface area, all that fun stuff that which, which Ryan touched on. Um, higher optics are the new thing. And ultimately, optics are adjustable. They are absolutely adjustable. So. Like literally, if we bought this EMG uh, red dot here, like we literally could just get another quarter of an inch riser and you have a riser on this thing. Um, try it out. Like honestly, the, the high amount, like as I, all my duty guns have high amount. Everything. Yeah, everything. I have everything I run. It eliminates some of that neck crunching too. If you've yeah. got a really low right, right. And it. ultimately, even with the, the chin weld, yeah. you're still getting that fourth. You're point getting you're getting a point of contact there. It may not be adding a lot, but it's still a point of contact. So it's something to help controlling the gun in essence. And obviously, with real guns in perspective to airsoft guns, airsoft guns don't have as much recoil, um, but the potential is there. We want to again establish the training mentality that we want to translate this to be cost effective and be able to translate this into real guns. And if we do that, and we, again, as long as you attack the proper mentality and in going into this, you will have a ton of success, success. And you practice the fundamentals of working the rifle into positions that uh, when you pick a real gun, I uh, do a slight recoil, everything else is good. Well, that just about covers rifle presentation with regard uh, to, to AR-15s and M4s, but a lot of the, the techniques and instruction that has been provided uh, by both Mojo and Ryan in this video can be applied to and just about any rifle platform. So hopefully you gleaned some helpful information here. Make sure you're staying tuned to the rest of the Cross Trainer series for even more instruction and helpful hints uh, and you know training tips uh, from Mojo and Ryan on this series.